Hello, uh, my name is Sai Emanor. Um, today I'm going to talk about open source edge computing platform for air quality applications. Um, this is a project that I'm working on with my uh, brother Sri. Um, we are an independent uh, team of engineers. We live on the opposite um, coast of the United States. Um, we tend to work on projects that focuses on uh, improving quality of life um, for vulnerable population. We share our projects at, um, uh, at various events across the country, um, like maker fairs, conferences, etc. Our uh, primary focus is on developing um, low cost uh, hardware um, and so that it could be um, shared with others. Um, uh, today, I'm going to talk about our platform, why we, um, you know, chose to um, uh, develop it. Uh, we wanted to actually use um, off-the-shelf hardware to build an open and flexible platform. Um, this was because, uh, you know, we were, you know, like, um, like starting several projects that was, uh, you know, that was start, you know, um, where we were using the same set of hardware options and we were reinventing the view. Um, so we wanted to develop a low cost platform that could be used for various projects. Um, and this way it could, uh, you know, help uh, better data collection for running citizen science experiments by people who don't necessarily have the um, required knowledge um, to, you know, uh, to get started. Um, a little bit about edge computing in case you're not familiar. Um, edge computing is a paradigm where you're pushing the um, intelligence from the cloud um, to the local source, uh, meaning the uh, like, you know, the inference of an anomaly actually happens at the um, uh, source instead of actually having the data point travel through the internet to a cloud service where you know the analysis is conducted. There are a couple of reasons to do this. Um, edge computing actually helps you avoid um, large um, data lakes. Um, it can help you uh, you know detect anomalies in e immediately and uh, react to it. For example, um, if you detect a problem, it could be you know you could uh, react. It, it, the problem could be reported immediately uh, instead of having to wait for uh, you know uh, to conduct further analysis also the availability of um, cheap and powerful processors has also uh, you know uh, created uh, an opportunity for improvement in, in you know uh, for like you know for advancement in the field of um, edge computing so when it comes to uh, developing an edge computing platform, uh, you know, we, you know, the, the development sequence is as follows. You, you collect data from your sensors, you analyze and label your data, you know, you understand, you, uh, you try to understand the patterns, um, you try to uh, detect, um, you know, what's, uh, you try to understand what's possible and what's not possible. Then you build your, uh, you know, machine learning models. Um, you typically train these models in, in the cloud. And once you're ready, um, you can uh, use these models to actually uh, to process the data that you're collecting. Now, in the case of edge devices, you uh, deploy these models on the uh, on your edge device so that the um, uh, so that this um, data analysis can happen right next to the sensor instead of having to upload the data point to the cloud. Now with that in mind, we actually built a data collection tool or for ourselves on the picture uh, to the um, right of this, uh, the slide is a, a, a circuit board that we built um, call, and we call it the PM sensor node, but it could be used for any uh, type of sensor. It actually uses a Zigbee wireless module um, uh, to collect data. Uh, the the uh, the nifty thing about this board is that um, it can run off of a diesel battery, and uh, you know it's and it's and the battery can last up to um, five years um, depending upon operating conditions and such. 
and it can help um, collect uh, data. So our first step in this process was to actually um, collect data from around our immediate surroundings. So for example, um, we have uh, installed um, this device in our living room as well as we have installed one device um, outside um, so that we could uh, collect and understand you know um, how the air quality data varies over time and uh, we uh, we um, the circuit board actually has been uh, designed to operate like you know uh, like uh, operate inside of a of a NEMA rated enclosure and we have designed it in a way where um, it could be uh, you know inter like you know interface to off the shelf uh, sensors um, and you can interface um, any sensor with an I squared C interface. Um, in the picture here, you can actually see a, a connector that enables um, connecting any sensor of your choice. Um, the idea is that once we have a collected data and once we think that, you know, uh, we could um, like detect anomalies uh, in the air quality. Um, an anomaly could be anything. The next step is to actually um, develop um, um, the edge device, uh, meaning, you know, developing the device um, that actually um, conducts the inference. Um, for this, we went with the SparkFun Edge. Um, it can, uh, it, it costs about $15. And this thing um, can be powered by a coin cell. Um, the cool thing about this is that this development tool actually comes with a, um, a bunch of sensors on it. For example, it has an onboard accelerometer, a microphone, and it also comes with established data set examples that helps you get started with edge computing. And uh, the other thing is that it also enables um, connecting um, off the shelf sensors that comes with what's called a quick um, connector from SparkFun. Um, so this hardware, um, so the way the quick connector ecosystem works is that you can connect a whole bunch of sensors, like, you know, you can tether all of them together uh, in a round robin fashion and you can uh, use it for your um, prototyping. That's the picture um, you see here. Um, we were able to actually um, get it up and running in, in a, a very quick time. And we are currently in the process of building a, a prototype using the Artemis modules, which is also from SparkFun. These are open source modules that cost about $9. Um, the cool thing about this is that these are FCC certified modules, uh, you know, that comes with um, onboard Bluetooth capability. So once uh, you uh, once you are done with your prototyping, um, you could actually go ahead and um, use the Artemis module to go ahead and build your hardware um, for, you know, uh, for your, um, to run your experiment. Um, so we are currently in the process of um, refining our hardware. Um, so we actually are using a service called Oshpark. Um, Osh stands for open source hardware. Um, so we are using their services to uh, refine our device and uh, build our hardware. Um, the the, uh, the PCB design itself uh, is leveraging the um, a, a reference um, design from SparkFun that's available on a um, open source hardware license. So we are making additions to the design. The idea here is that you know, we plan to verify and validate this design and uh, make it available for other citizen science enthusiasts um, at some point. Um, and um, we will share the design once we have verified the, um, the final uh, prototype. Um, we are looking for uh, some, uh, you know, um, some comments and some uh, uh, suggestions and some, uh, uh, you know, and, and potential collaborators um, so that we could um, share our work with others. I have included um, the uh, link to my LinkedIn profile and my uh, Twitter handle uh, below. 
And this is the link to the GitHub repo that contains the, um, the, the link, the design files and other information uh, to this project. And I will be, uh, uh, both of us will stick around um, to answer any questions you may have. I hope you enjoyed today's talk. Thank you.